Hey there, everybody. Mr. Corden here to talk about limiting reactants. Um, so, so far in chemistry, we have been told which reactant is limiting and which reactant is in excess. Um, so, a reminder, when we did that nail lab, after the reaction was done, there was still some part of the nail left over afterwards. So, that means it was in excess. And that blue copper chloride CuCl2 solution, that was no longer blue at all on day two, which means we must have used it all. So copper chloride in that reaction limited the reaction from making more products because we ran out of it. So limiting reactant is the reactant that runs out or goes to zero moles afterwards. And so again, so far we've been telling you which reactant is going to be limiting and which reactant is in excess. But in reality, that's something you're gonna to have to figure out. So that's kind of our next step here is figuring out which one is going to run out. So we have a, a little more hands-on, a little more visual activity slash lab today to help us um, figure out what kinds of things should we be looking for in order to determine which reactant will be limiting in a reaction. So we're gonna be doing uh, a little s'mores lab here and so the chemical reaction for creating a s'more is 2g so two graham crackers plus one marshmallow plus three c which is chocolate chip so three chocolate chips and that will make one s'more and again one s'more is two graham crackers one marshmallow and three chocolate chips Okay, so we have six different scenarios here, and <clears throat> I'm going to show you what we have before, and we're just going to keep making s'mores until we can't anymore and see which reactant, the graham crackers, the marshmallow, or the chocolate chip, is going to limit us from making more product, more s'mores. Okay, so let's do the first one together here. We got cup one. So cup one. All right, so I got some graham crackers, I got some marshmallows, and I got some chocolate chips. Okay, so let's see how many of each reactant we have to start off. We have one, two, three, four, five, six graham crackers. So I'm going to put six for the before. Before we made any s'mores, we had six graham crackers. That's the number of, number of particles that we had to start. For marshmallows, we had one, two, three, four, five, six. So we had six marshmallows to start off. Again, before we made any s'mores, these are the values that we have. And for chocolate chips, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we actually have six again. Okay, so before the reaction starts, we have six of each reactant. Let's see which reactant is going to limit us from making more products. So again, every time I make a s'more, I wanna put two graham crackers together, one marshmallow together, and three chocolate chips together to make one s'more. Before we have made any s'mores, we do not have any s'mores, right? We haven't made any yet. So remember, before the reaction starts, we can always say we have zero products because we haven't made anything yet. All right, so now let's go ahead and do the reaction and see what's going to happen. All right, so I take two graham crackers, three chocolate chips, and one marshmallow, and I can make a s'more that way. And I take two graham crackers, take three chocolate chips, and I take a marshmallow to make my second s'more. And then I go to make another s'more, and we are out of chocolate chips. So even though I still have graham crackers and marshmallows here, I can't make any more s'mores. So the reaction is now done, because you can't make a s'more without chocolate chips. All right, so we made two s'mores.
And then in order to do that, let's see what happened here. Afterwards, we had zero chocolate chips left. See what happened afterwards here. We had zero chocolate chips. We have four marshmallows, and we have two graham crackers left over. So four marshmallows left over, and two graham crackers left over. Okay. <clears throat> Another way you can look at that is we could look at how much was involved in the reaction. So four total graham crackers reacted. Six total chocolate chips reacted, and two total marshmallows reacted. Four graham crackers. So we used up four graham crackers, we used up two marshmallows, and we used up six chocolate chips. Okay, so one thing we can notice here is that just like before, all everything in the change row which is how much is actually reacting in your reaction, is not the same number as the numbers in the top of the reaction, but it's the same ratio, right? And that makes sense because every time I make a s'more, I'm always going to make, use two times, the, two times as many graham crackers as marshmallows, right? They have that two to one ratio. So I have double the amount of graham crackers used as marshmallows, okay? So our limiting reactant was chocolate, and we were able to uh, make two total s'mores. All right, so that was cup one. Let's try cup two together. All right, so looking at, that's a five. This is a two. All right, cup two, let's try it out. So these are all of our reactants. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight graham crackers. So we can put an eight here. That's how much we started with marshmallows. We're gonna start with three. And then chocolate chips, we are starting with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 chocolate chips. All right. Based on the amounts that we have to start out in front of us, and based on how much of each reactant is used every time the reaction occurs, see if you can predict which reactant will run out and limit us from making more reactions. All right, I just briefly paused the video uh, because I, I can't even make this up. I'm, I'm here, it's eight o'clock at night, um, and the intercom noise came on, so I paused it real quick. And uh, Under Pressure by Queen just started blasting over the intercom and uh, for about a good two minutes. And then it, it went dead and I haven't heard a sound since then. But I'm just going to move on and, ho and hope everything ends up okay. Okay, before we actually start making s'mores, I want you guys to make a prediction on, on which reactant will limit us from making more s'mores. So what's the, gonna be the reactant that's gonna hold us back from making more s'mores, more of our product? Um, so go ahead and pause the video at this time and see if you can predict that. All right, hopefully by this point, you've had time to predict which reactant is going to run out first based on what we started with, the amount we start with before, and the amount each time uh, each reactant is used before the reaction occurs. So let's see what will happen. Right, again, every time, 
every time we make a s'more, we need two graham crackers, three chocolate chips, and we need one marshmallow. So that makes one s'more, two graham crackers, one marshmallow, three chocolate chips, two graham crackers, one marshmallow, three chocolate chips. And then at this point, we have graham crackers left, we have chocolate chips left, but we don't have any marshmallows left. So I can't make any more s'mores because marshmallows was the limiting reactant. We ran out of marshmallows, and you can't make a s'more without marshmallows. We all know that. So let's see what occurred here then. We used three marshmallows. We can see that there are three marshmallows total used. We got one was used in this s'more, one used in this s'more, and one used in this s'more. So one thing we can note is we used three marshmallows and we made three s'mores. Oh, right before the reaction happened, we hadn't made any s'mores yet. And so one, again, one thing we can notice here, just like before, if you have a number in front here that is the same as another number in your reaction, that means every time the reaction occurs, the same amount is involved. So every time you make a sm one s'more, you use one marshmallow. So no matter how many s'mores you make, like three s'mores, let's say, that amount of marshmallows is going to be the exact same. Okay, these are some of the skills we're going to be using here in a little bit to predict how many s'mores will be made, to predict how many marshmallows will be used. Because um, in a real reaction, we won't have these manipulatives to help us out. Okay, and so again, without even looking at the board here, we can, we can kind of figure out how many graham crackers we must have used and how many chocolate chips we must have used. Every time I use one marshmallow, I'm using two chocolate chips, or sorry, two graham crackers. So the ratio between marshmallows to graham crackers is a two to one ratio. So I'm always using double the amount of graham crackers as marshmallows. So if I use three marshmallows, I'm gonna use double that amount for the amount of graham crackers, six. And again, we can confirm that. We have two graham crackers used here, two graham crackers used here, two graham crackers used here for a total of six. And then we can also predict the number of chocolate chips that we used. If we use three for s'mores, or three per s'more, and we make three s'mores, how many chocolate chips did we use? Right? Well, it's that same that's that same thing with the ratio, right? Three chocolate chips per s'more. So every s'more, I have three. That means I have triple the amount of chocolate chips as s'mores made. So if I have three s'mores made, that means we used nine chocolate chips. And so eight minus six would get us two. And that's what we see here. Afterwards, we have two graham crackers left over, not reacted with anything. Three minus three is zero. That's also true because we don't have any marshmallows remaining. We've used them all. And 15, nine, 15 minus nine is six. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six chocolate chips still remaining. And we made a total of three s'mores. So the limiting reactant was marshmallows because they limited us from making more products. All right, we're going to do one more together, cup three. All right, we got cup three here. So we'll go ahead and dump out all of our reactants and let's see what we have. 
we have one, two, three, four graham crackers. We have three marshmallows. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen chocolate chips. Right, and looking here, we we have no s'mores. We have not made any s'mores yet. We just have the ingredients to make them. We haven't made any actual s'mores yet. Right? And that's why again that product is always zero. All right, for this one, I want you guys to pause the video and see if you can fill out this entire BCA table. See if you can predict which reactant's gonna limit us from making more s'mores, and then therefore, how many s'mores are we actually going to be able to make? How many of each reactant are we gonna use? And how many of each reactant will we have left over when it's all said and done? Okay, see if you can predict that before moving on to the next part. It's really important that you guys try this before moving on. So go ahead and pause the video now. See if you can fill out the rest of the BCA table from here. In order to fill it out from here, you're going to have to make a prediction of what's going to run out first, what's going to limit us from making more s'mores, and then see if you have enough of the other reactants that would be necessary um, to make that many s'mores. So go ahead and pause the video and try that out at this time. All right, hopefully you guys have uh, just finished up your BCA table prediction, and so let's see let's see how you did. All right, so just like before, to make one s'more, we need two graham crackers, we need one marshmallow, and three chocolate chips. I go to make another s'more: two graham crackers, one marshmallow, three chocolate chips, and oh. I can no longer make any s'mores now because I have ran out of graham crackers. Okay, so we used up all of our graham crackers. They all ran out. Marshmallows, we used two of those. And chocolate chips, we made two s'mores, so we used six chocolate chips. And again, I know a lot of us were having a hard time figuring out how do we how do we predict how many of one reactant we use based on the other. So you can always kind of bring it back to this s'more lab. This is going to be a really good visual for us, right? So if you if we make two s'mores and there's three per s'more, three chocolate chips per s'more, right? That means that there's three times the amount of chocolate chips as s'mores. So that's where we get six here. Two times three gets us six, right? So again, using our knowledge of the amounts each time the reaction occurs will help us predict the amount of each that we will um, go ahead and do. So if we started with three and used two, that means we have one left. Starting with 15 chocolate chips and using six, that means we have nine left. Starting with zero s'mores, making two, that means we end with two s'mores with graham crackers as our limiting reactant. All right, so let's go ahead and review a few things that we have seen here. In cup three, limiting reactant was the graham crackers. That was the reactant that limited us from making more s'mores. The limiting reactant for cup two was marshmallows. And the limiting reactant for cup one was chocolate. So in three different scenarios, we have seen three different limiting reactants, right? So there's no one set in stone way to know which one's the limiting reactant, but let's think about the type, the type of things we should be investigating and kind of keeping in the back of our head when we're making predictions on what's going to run out, okay? In, the, uh, in cup one here, the thing that ran out was the thing that was used most often, most frequently. Every time the reaction occurs, we have more chocolate chips used than any other reactant, right? And so when we started out with the same amount of each reactant, the thing that was used up more often, more each reaction, was the thing that ran out first. So one, bit, one factor we need to think about is 
these numbers in front, the numbers that tell us how many of each reactant is involved in the, if the reaction happens one time. Okay, but that's not the only way to figure that out because in cup two, it's the same reaction, yet we had plenty of chocolate chips left over. Okay, so the other thing we need to look at in cup two, the thing that had, that the, had the least that we started with was the one that ran out, right? So we have to think in the back of our heads, well, how much of each is happening each reaction? And then how much do we have in front of us actually on the table? Okay, so in this case, the thing that we had the least amount of was the one that ran out first. Okay, so those are the two main things we wanna be thinking about, right? Now, cup three is a great example of, you know, it's not necessarily the thing we have the least amount of, right? We started with three marshmallows. That was the least amount out of any reactant, and yet we still had some left over, okay? So, again, we need to think about what's happening each time the reaction occurs, as well as how much of each do we start with. Kind of putting those two pieces of information together will be really helpful in uh, aiding us in predicting which will be the limiting reactant, which will run out first. Okay. So what you want to do is when you make your prediction, okay, so let's go to cup four. Okay, we can go ahead and make a prediction of what's going to run out first. Um, we see four graham crackers, we see one marshmallow, we see six chocolate chips. Let's say that we think that graham crackers is going to run out. Okay, so if graham crackers were to run out, we would use four graham crackers and we would have zero left over. Okay, once you make your prediction, you need to check to see if you have enough supplies um, of the other reactants in order to make that many products. Okay, so if we were to use four graham crackers, think how many marshmallows would we need if we were to use four graham crackers? Well, we use half the amount of marshmallows as graham crackers, so we would need two. Uh-oh, can we use two marshmallows if we only have one? All right, hopefully your answer is no there. We can't do that. So if you run into this problem, if you get a negative answer for after, that's telling us that this is not the limiting reactant. Okay, so this is how you can always check your work in a limiting reactant problem. Check to see if you have the right amounts of each reactant in order to even make this reaction happen. Okay, so this is telling me, nope, we guessed incorrectly. We know graham crackers don't run out. Let's go ahead and try marshmallows. Well, if marshmallows run out, we would have minus one and that would go to zero. Again, we need to see if we have enough of the other reactants to even make this happen. So if I use one marshmallow, how many graham crackers would I use? Well, there's that one to two ratio, right? So I'm always gonna use twice the amount of graham crackers as marshmallows. One marshmallow would twice that amount would be two graham crackers. We could do two graham crackers if we start with four. All right, and then let's check to see if we have enough chocolate chips. If I use one marshmallow, every time I use one marshmallow, I use three chocolate chips. So I use three times the amount of chocolate chips as marshmallows. So if I use one marshmallow, three times that amount would be three. And again, we have enough chocolate chips. We have enough graham crackers. This must be the limiting reactant. It must be marshmallows. Once we prove that we have the correct limiting reactant, we can predict how much products we will make. We know we always start with zero products, but we can predict how many s'mores we'll make. Think about if we're using this amount of graham cracker, marshmallow, and chocolate chips, how many s'mores do you think we would make? All right, well, a couple ways to think about this. Anytime you have a ratio that is the same number, that's the easiest way to always solve for an unknown, right? This one-to-one -one ratio, every time I make a s'more, I use one marshmallow. So a kind of way to get around doing some math here would be, well, the same, however many marshmallows I use, 
that's how many s'mores I'm going to make. So if I used one marshmallow, that would mean I would make one s'more. And that would be that. So let's go ahead and open up cup four and see if this, our prediction here holds true. Let's see if this is how the reaction actually would work out. All right, I got cup four here. So let's see if our prediction holds true. All right, just like we said, we have the four graham crackers. We have the one marshmallow and we have the six chocolate chips like we had discussed for the before. So to make a s'more, we take two graham crackers, one marshmallow and three chocolate chips. And then, yeah, looks like we were right. We ran out of marshmallows, so we have zero of those left. We made months more like we predicted. We had two graham crackers left over like we predicted. That's the after. And afterwards, we had three chocolate chips there. So again, we are going to be able to predict a in a chemical reaction. We're going to be able to predict which is going to be the limiting reactant and how much product we are going to make. So uh, the days of us telling you which reactant is in excess and which reactant is limiting are unfortunately coming to an end because we're going to have you guys figure that out. All right, for some practice, go ahead and try out cup five and six. See if you can predict how many s'mores will be made, what the limiting reactant will be, and then I'm going to just build them out real quick. So pause here, and then we'll come back when you have those uh, predictions in. All right, cup five is a doozy here. We got a lot of materials here to start. We got 12 graham crackers. We got seven marshmallows. And we have 20 chocolate chips. So let's go ahead and make some s'mores and see what we get. Okay, two to one to three ratio. Two to one to three ratio. Two to one to three ratio. Two to one to three ratio and two to one to three ratio all right so we made a total of one two three four five six s'mores we had one marshmallow left over we had two chocolate chips left over and we had zero graham crackers left over so graham crackers was our limiting reactant let's go ahead and check out cup number six all right, we got cup six here, our last one. All right, and let's see what we got. Just like I had filled on the BCA table, we got 10 graham crackers, five marshmallows, and three chocolate chips. Every s'more, we use two graham crackers, one marshmallow, and three chocolate chips. And oh, this reaction went out very quickly. We're done. We can't make any s'mores because we no longer have chocolate chips. So we made one s'more. We had two, four, six, eight graham crackers left and four marshmallows left. Okay, so again, in cup six, our afters were eight for graham crackers. We had four marshmallows left, zero chocolate chips left, and we made one s'more. So hopefully that helps you kind of visualize how to determine what reactant is going to run out. Because again, we are no longer going to be telling you which one's going to run out. You're going to have to kind of think it through. Okay. And so I'd like you guys to see if you can answer these post-lab questions uh, based on what we discussed in the lab. And then see if you can make some predictions on different amounts from these cups here. Thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, again, once you have all those finished out, um, we can kind of talk through things as a class.